Coming up on tonight's House of Tiny Tearaways. Harry, go to your room now. It's going to take you time to like me. It's going to take you time to like yourself. Mm. You're great. Behind me, three families are waking up to their fourth day in the house of Tiny Tearaways. With Tanya's support, they've each made real progress, but can it continue today? The Davises. No, Mother Yoda! The Goldens. <laughs> and the Oshitolis arrived in the house desperate for clinical psychologist Dr. Tanya Byron to help them tackle their children's extreme problems. With just three days left, all the families are hoping Tanya can turn their lives around in the house of Tiny Tearaways. Oh. It's breakfast time, and the Golden boys, Harry and Joe, are with Mum George in the kitchen. Joseph, you do that again, you will go to your room. Joe, go back and listen to Mummy. I did. Right, go back. What did you do, Mummy? He hit Harry. Why did you hit Harry? Because he wanted these ones, so right. they just pinched Why them. wouldn't you want crisps? I was sitting there. Right, go and spend a couple of minutes in your room thinking about your behaviour. No, for me. Joe, go into the room now. No. I definitely don't think you should be able to have crisps after you've just hit your brother. Thank you. <laughs> right, go and pick them up. Oh, Mummy's picked them up. Mummy. What no. do you want to do with him, Mummy? What do you think we should do, Joe? Not do you think it's acceptable to hit your brother Mommy. over a bag Mommy. of crisps? Mummy! Shut up. You can go to your room. Go. Mommy. Do not speak to Mummy like that again. Wait a if minute, he's naughty, Harry. Mummy, I want to know. If you the Golden family is struggling to handle the behaviour of three-year-old oh, son Harry doing, Harry. and brother Shut Joe, who's up. five and a half. In a sense that you don't Earlier this week, Tanya sons, told Dad Chris and Mum George the that they need to redress really the unequal power balance in the family. Sons, Both parents are now working together to regain really authority and, and give their children clear and consistent parenting. Do you think it's OK to tell Mummy to shut up? Then why did you say it? Because. Because why? You're being rude to me. How exactly am I being rude to you? That's because her I was on that chair so I said to him get another chair and he didn't listen. So you hit him? Yes. Because he started it first. But you should never hit your brother. I don't want that brother. He just want to change a different brother. Well, you can't. Yes. We've got Harry and we love Harry. No, we don't. Yes, you do love Harry. No, I don't. I want you to stay in your bedroom and I want you to think about the way you deal with issues. I didn't even kick him. And when you feel ready to come back out and be nice... Mama. Yes, my little darling. <coughs> when you think you can I come out and not be aggressive to your brother and not be rude to Mummy... You can come out. Mama. OK? Mummy. Yes, Harry, come on. Let's go away. And I will expect you to apologise to Harry for hitting him. While Joe Golton is timed out, nice. Michael and Jesse Oshitola sit down nice. for breakfast in the dining room. I want yeah. juice. You want juice? Yes. Yeah. Have a little bite, small bite. No. No. The Oshitolas were at their wits' end because of two-year-old son Jesse's chronic sleeping problem. What you have to Tanya advised parents, Kemi and Michael, that Jesse no, needed a more structured that. routine at bedtime. Read this. Look, look. With this now in place, oh. Jesse's sleep oh. pattern has vastly oh. improved. Yeah, they now need to learn to stop giving in to their son for their problems yeah, to continue. <laughs> listen, 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 listen to me. Remember yesterday? Yeah, you cried, didn't you? You didn't get what you want. Jesse, listen, the choice is yours. 
You wanna go to the room? You wanna go to the room? No. Yeah, I'm taking you to the room. You wanna go to the room? No. Alright, you're going to the room now. No. No, you don't go to the room? No. Okay. You, sit down here. Sit down. Sit down. Just look. If you don't eat your toast, no play, no juice. You hear me? You want juice? You want play, eat toast. Yes? Come on. Take some more. Good boy. Good boy. Well, sit down and take small till you go and play, yeah? Right, go on. Yeah. Go on, pick it up. Uh-oh. 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 The Ostertolers arrived uh, four days ago with their two-year-old son, Jesse, who has uh, an extreme sleeping problem. Mm -hmm. He would go to bed at about 1am after being on a trampoline or going up and down the corridor on a bicycle. Uh, how did he sleep last night? Um, well, uh, bicycles and trampolines are not part of the sleep routine anymore. Yeah, brilliant. Hooray. Um, he did really, really well. I mean, I think it's important to say also this little boy has a really severe eczema at the moment and he's just been diagnosed with a lot of food allergies so his skin is really on fire. Um, so sleep for him is going to be really hard because children who do have rashes, eczemas, um, you know, allergic rashes, when they're busy and focused during the day often forget to scratch and don't really notice the itching. But at night when everything is still and quiet, it's a big issue. You're going to send the Ostertolas out today. Where are you sending them and why? It's a full-on day, a very normal family day, but a day that requires precision around structure, routine and timing. So we've got soft play centre for Jesse, nice 45 minutes of play, followed by lunch, taking us back to yesterday when Jesse couldn't eat his lunch because he wanted a particular toy and Michael and Kemi could not be firm and boundaried about that. So I want to see how they do today in yeah. the same sort of scenario. Followed by shopping, supermarket shopping. Jesse may not like it. How can they keep he him entertained but get on with what they need to do? Followed by come home, cook supper for whole house, bath child, read story, sing gentle lullaby, and then put him to bed by 7.30. Do you think that's going to happen? See, that's the plan. <laughs> Following his time out earlier, Joe again, Goldman now. has rejoined his family in the living area. I've got Jojo on me as well. It did hurt a little bit. Daddy? Yes, darling? You're playing with Joe and he still hasn't apologised to Harry. Oh, right, you need to get off and go and say sorry to Harry then, please, Joe. I did! You didn't say sorry. I did! Right, we'll go and do it again then, just to so we can hear you and we know you've done it, darling. Sorry! No, go and do it properly. That's not nice, is it, the way you do this? No, you get off and go over and do it, Joe. No, I'm brown ones. The brown ones I'm keeping for when Jojo is a good boy. No, he's not a good boy. I'm a good boy. You are a very, very good boy. I'm not playing with you. Morning. I'm so bad. Look what I've got. Hey, <gasps> stink. Uh, no, no, that's sorry. fine. If he doesn't accept yeah. it, that's that's up to Harry. Sorry. You've been a good boy because you've said sorry. No, my question. Okay, you haven't said sorry. I did... And I said you could have crisps, and then I get them out, and mm -hmm. you make me put them back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Harry, you oh. could have had those crisps. But you kept changing your mind. <laughs> Harry, look what I've got. I want the one. Go a baldy. Do you want some? I'm not yours, Mummy. You can have some. Is it worth a kiss? No. no <gasps> oh, no, I'm stop all those tears. Come... You can't have it all. With that, come, you can't have all that. Come back. You can't have all that. Come back. Come back. Daddy's stolen biscuit. He's stolen biscuits. It's the phantom biscuit thief. He's back. Who stole the biscuit? <laughs> this is the biscuit stealer. I've got that. Did you steal the biscuits? <laughs>
Did you? Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. How much have I enjoyed watching you and your family this morning? <laughs> what a lovely start to the day. Not too bad. We've got out of a bit of a predicament there, didn't we? Very much. Very, very nicely. Really well. Amelia Davis oh. and Joe Galton are playing with Tanya's fairy castle in the green suite. It's, it's not pink. Tanya made it for me. Matthew and Natalie Davis <laughs> came to the house frantically worried about four-year-old daughter Amelia's restricted like diet. That. Since arriving, Tanya has observed that mealtimes are a Better battle sauce. for control I between know. Amelia and her mum. Oh. She's encouraged Natalie to be more relaxed at the table. As an incentive, Tanya has offered Amelia a fairy castle, promising her more toys for it if she tries new foods. Look what I'm doing. I'm not hungry anymore. Oh, OK. I'm getting dumb. I made With Dad do Matthew up. out of the house on business, yeah, Mum just, Natalie has oh, joined the children in the then bedroom. I did it. Amelia. I, I just wanted to put it there. That's the best place for her to go because she is the queen of the castle. Yeah, it? and also no, the princess. The princess of the castle. She should be in there because she is pink, isn't she? She is. And the castle's she? pink. Isn't it lovely? Yeah. Now, have you seen all the other ones up there? You've got to eat something <coughs> every lunchtime <gasps> and tea time so that we can get you another princess. Otherwise, darling, on Friday, it's this castle staying here with all the princesses. No! I know, so quick, we've got to show Tanya what we can do, haven't we? So every time you do something good and you try something new or you touch it or you kiss it or you lick it, <coughs> you can have something else. Okay? Mm. Is that okay? No. What do you mean, no? That's not okay. Why it, isn't it okay? Yeah, because I don't like fat chips. Now I started eating them. Did you? Well done, Joe. Did you hear that, Amelia? No. Tell Joe, tell Amelia what you did. I don't like fat chips anymore, but now I like them. Because <gasps> Joe ate them yesterday. Mm. Wasn't he a good boy? Look at you looking at yourself, little madam. How cute is that? As Jesse oh, Oshitoma is left to play with the Gortons, yeah, parents oh, Michael and Kemi enter the consultation room to talk to Tanya. He's all right. Is he all right? Yeah, yeah. should be all right. Okay. Well, good morning. Morning. So, how was your night last night? Uh, yeah, I thought it went quite it was well. better than the first day, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's hard when you're so tired to be really clear about what's happened, isn't it? Yeah. What do you think? It's good. Yeah, no, it's, like I said, you can see the vast improvement yourself from obviously day one, Sunday, to uh, last night. Um, he had um, over ten and a half hours of sleep last night. Wow. Which is a huge amount of sleep for Jesse. He basically, it took quite a long time to settle him, but you did really well with him and you lay with him and he settled yeah. really well, so that was fine. And then this first chunk here was a couple of hours and then you had about an hour of being awake. <laughs> but this is amazing. This is seven, over seven and a half hours of sleep on his own. Yeah, no, I was in his bed, myself. and you two were in your bed. It was quite incredible, and he would probably have not woken there if you hadn't have gone in, messed around with his covers, stroked him on the face. <laughs> And then you, you walked out and then he woke up. <laughs> I think if you hadn't gone in, Kemi, I think he would have, mm, he would slept, have slept through. through. And I think it's quite hard as a mother who's used to having her child <laughs> near her yeah. to suddenly see that her child is sleeping <laughs> through. I, mean, I couldn't good? believe he was just sleeping off. No, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> that is huge progress. That is huge, huge progress. I'm, I'm quite surprised. And I think Jesse's doing incredibly well. It's OK, Jesse. Go on. No! Sorry, yeah, this is really upsetting you, isn't it? <gasps> Look who it is! <laughs> <laughs> Bring him in. Yeah. Made you run around. Hey, Jesse. Good Hello. Boy. Here, sweetie pie. 
Hey, you've got your daddy back. Jesse's a clever boy sleeping in his bed. He's obviously got some separation anxiety because we've just, that's what's just what's mm. happened out there. He gets very anxious and, you know, we've got to work with that. This isn't about making him cry and cry and be mm. very distraught. He's only two. So I think we'll just take it very slowly at his pace. But this is brilliant progress. Are you pleased? Yeah. Yeah, you've got to be. I mean, I just know Jesse's character and how he's been in the past, obviously not been in here, and I would never have put any money in him and been able mm. to sleep like that. I wouldn't have done. That's the truth. I am. I know. Surprised. So what? It's a miracle. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, it is. It is. It is a very good improvement. He 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 was fantastic at breakfast, wasn't he? He sat yeah, there. He behaved really well. But you were very different with him. You were much clearer with him. You were right. If you eat this, then you can have this. But if you don't, you can't. I think Jesse is beginning to understand what you want from him. So I think he is a child who likes to know where he stands. Yeah. Mm. And I think we've seen that. So routine and structure is really, really important for him. So um, that's kind of the theme of the day, really. Is we need the Davises and the Goldens are making pasta for lunch. In the middle of your Tanya is encouraging like Natalie Davis to get daughter Amelia involved in this activity it. to help her overcome her fear of new foods. That's perfect. Good girl. Who wants flour on the face? Me. <laughs> Right now, some into yours. While sons Harry and Joe continue like to make pasta with the Davises, Chris and George Goldman join Tony in the, the consultation egg. room. Okay. Before we start yeah. anything, I just wanted to sort of talk to you about how you both are because, well, you tell me how you're feeling. It's great. Lighter. Lighter. Yeah. At the moment, I, I've, I, I'm, I think I've got a bit, a bit scared. I think this, it's all going so well in here. You know, it could all go so wrong when I get out there. So I'm hoping today that by the end of today, I'm thinking, no, this really is working. Yeah. But when you say lighter, what, what do you, I mean... Just cos you're happier. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to get... I, I was laying there desperately wanting to go to sleep so I could wake up in the morning. I was like this morning. I was desperately wanting to wake, what, you to wake up. Yeah. That's I really, I just, it was I lovely just to put Toby to go in. so I could get up in the morning. Yeah. And have another day. And, and I was, yeah. it was excited about the next day. When was the last time you felt excited I to have a day? I can't remember. I cannot mm. remember. Generally, you wake up, what, with dread? Yeah. What, what on earth is the, the day going to bring? What unhappiness is the day going to bring? All very negative thoughts. And your thoughts this morning have been how? I, I woke up this morning, all the boys were in the room, Chris was in the room, all of them came and gave me a kiss. It was like, even Harry came and kissed me without being asked. And that's something that you've always said, he's not an affectionate child. No, I mean, he does. When he gives big cuddles, I mean, we've got, we've got this joke, I say, oh, squeeze me till my eyes pop out. I just want the yeah. biggest cuddle mm -hmm. I can get. Yeah. But he's actually doing it without mm. reason. And why do you think that is? I think he's just happier. He's just mm. calmer. I think he's seeing me calmer, more approachable. I think you're right. Mm. I mean, this morning with the biscuits, the potential was, to, was for him to, to kick sorry. off because of the one bag of crisps that they both wanted. Okay. Mm. And how he started messing me about, so I made a decision, well, he's not going to have them. He clearly doesn't want them. Joe does want these crisps. And he's been naughty, he pushed his brother. That can be his reward. How proud are you of you? After that, I felt great. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was helped by you coming out and sort of saying, that was fantastic. Mm. I need the good criticism as well as the bad criticism. You know, I need, I need people to say, yeah, you did really well there. You know, I, I think I work very well on feedback. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's my self-esteem. But whose is the most important voice in terms of giving you feedback? Mine. Yeah. It's, it's going to take me time to like me. It's going to take you time to like yourself. Mm. You're great. I know, but I need to think it myself. I mean, I, I know you think I'm great, and, you know, that makes me really happy, but I don't know why you think I'm great. I, I don't know what it is about me. You're my Georgie. I know. The mother of my children. I know. And the best mother they could have. And they love you a bit as well. Until you, Georgie, in yourself, 
have a belief that you're a good person. Mm. People could bombard you with compliments and love matter. and kisses, mm. but none of it will stick because inside you feel that your view of yourself is completely different, and it is. One of the things that is, is a real pleasure for me is to watch you as a family grow together again. Yeah. Now, what I see often with you is you have an interaction with any of your sons, particularly Harry, I think, because you've been so worried about him for so long. And it's a really lovely interaction. Sometimes you and he just make eye contact and, and there's a smile. And I watch you do two things. First of all, you respond to him really positively. And then I watch you almost catching yourself feeling happy. And you then start to look quite surprised. There's a part of you that is loving it and there's another part of you that's terrified. Mm. What are you the most frightened of? all going wrong. That it'll get taken away again? Yeah. Yeah. I think that really scares you. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's comfortable being unhappy because you either get unhappier or you can get happy again. But being happy and getting sad just feels so... Just, it's just such a dramatic change. So with happiness, there's only one way to go, and yeah. that's down. That's down. Whereas with unhappiness, you can go either way. Yeah, it's comfortable. I was listening into a conversation that you and Natalie were having on Monday when you were having some coffee. And I think you were saying something along the lines to Natalie of, I don't know if I finished my child rearing, my child bearing. And I wonder whether for you, child bearing equals a brief moment of happiness. It does. I'm, I, I felt amazing this child growing inside me mm. I felt important mm. you know I felt I had a role you know when I'm at home my mum and that's my role and it, that's comfort I don't know me mm. what so happened? it's alien to me so I'm more comfortable being in that role I'm the nurse I'm the mum but who's Georgie who's she I don't know has it always been like that um, I think it probably has. I think George has dedicated herself to the children so much at the expense of herself and lost her, her own identity. You've got to be you for the kids as well. Mm. You can't just be something that gives them but they everything. Are me. They're not. They're them. And I think what they've got this week is they're beginning to see who you are. Mm. And I think all of them. Lo I'm just loving it. And I think Harry, who is your little barometer, he is experiencing a mother who feels stronger, more in control and happier. And he doesn't need to kind of stir things up and get people going because he can see that it's happening within you. And I think that's very significant that to give yourself over to your boys completely, I think, is a recipe for disaster because they need to have an understanding about who you are that's separate to them. You are just, I think, completely disconnected from yourself. It's as if something has just kind of pulled you apart from yourself. Mm. When you describe yourself, you describe it's very polarised. This is what people tell me, mm. nice, 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 nice. This is what Chris is saying to me, I love you, you're beautiful. And this is what I hear. Mm. I'm too short, I'm not attractive, who'd want to be my friend? I'm so, so you've got the kind of complimentary stuff on this side and you've got the critical stuff on it, and it's mm. polarised. Mm. And that's exactly how you both, interestingly, but mostly you, Georgie, have been describing Harry to me. Mm. And it struck me on Sunday when your little boy, your tiny little boy, came up to me and introduced himself very specifically to me as Harry Charles Galton. And I really felt, here is a child saying, this is who I am. Mm. Almost because no one else really gets me. Mm. And for me, I think the big task we have for today to think about is looking at, actually, what is Harry? Mm. What is the reality of Harry? Yeah. So shall we try this exercise and see where we get? Yeah. So both of you, what are the criticisms of Harry? His temper. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stubborn. Uh, aggressive. 
Disobedient. Spiteful. Lona. Compliments. He's beautiful. I absolutely agree. Massive big brown eyes. Protective towards both his brothers, yeah. if anyone. You might argue with Joe, but if anyone comes near and starts upsetting Joe, Harry will jump in and be the one that will say, you leave my big brother alone. It's intelligent. Right. Harry. That's the reality. Harry Charles Galton. I he love got, his name. He has got a temper. He is, he is independent. independent. <laughs> he is strong-willed. And he is beautiful. He's beautiful with big brown eyes and rosy cheeks. He's affectionate to everybody. He is plus plus intelligent. Plus plus plus. He's normal. He's ours. So what else? That reality thing's you. Apart from the behaviour can be managed. <laughs> 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 anyway, I just it's lunch time and everyone is about to eat the pasta they made earlier. Amelia is also being given some chicken to try and her usual potato faces. So I didn't even put any sauce. I don't want it. Excuse me. Don't push it away from me. I don't want it. I don't um, want it. Don't eat it then. I want it. Do you know that that is that the is That's what you made. That's what we made. You did make it. That's what we made this morning. Okay. It's fine. That's what we're talking about. I really think that. Uh, right, that's really naughty, isn't it? That's really naughty. That's very naughty, isn't it? We do not behave like that at the table, do we? Are we going to go back and sit and eat our dinner properly? Yeah. No more nonsense. No breaking plates. That's very naughty. <laughs> if you don't like something, you do not try and break it or throw it on the floor or knock it over. Right, let's go back. <laughs> Are we not just going to touch it and put no. tomato sauce on it? Look. No! Look, then it's like... <laughs> Right, Harry, stop talking to Mummy like that now. I mean, if I give you some more tomato sauce, what are you going to do for me? Are you going to do anything for me? No. When you speak to me like that, I thought you wanted more of these and more princesses for your castle. Right, Harry. Thank you, Mummy. Thank you, Mummy. Okay, that's oh, your dinner. Sorry. Don't. We've just had a discussion where you said you don't push it away. Oh, I want right, you don't to want want this. Will you squeeze it then? I can't do it. All you'll do is that. And squeeze. I, I can do it. That's not much. Will you do it then? <laughs> Why don't we dip it in the sauce and wipe it on my face? <laughs> dip it in the sauce and wipe it on my face. Fine. Don't scream at it about it. It doesn't matter. I don't want it. It's Pardon? No, you're not getting down from the table. No, we haven't finished yet. Pardon? You can take your trainers off there. Amelia, I haven't said you can get down from the table. So you are not getting down from the table. We haven't finished our pudding yet. If you get down from this table, I assure you there's nothing else. You stay at this table right now, young lady. I'm warning you one more time. You sit back down right now. 
I'll take you to your room if you don't sit down. No, I'll count to three. No, no, no. Sit down and I'll take them on the no. Okay, right. I'll count to three, then I'm putting you in your room. No. One, two. No. Are you sitting down? Three. Right. You go to your room then. Yogurt for pudding. Right, we'll stop the tears. I don't want to hear it. Thank you. It's the halfway point for this week's three families in the house of tiny tearaways. And although progress has been made, there's still a long way to go. Parents Chris and George Galton arrived three days ago with their son Harry, whose bad behaviour and temper tantrums were tearing the family apart. Following Tanya's advice, Chris and George have worked on regaining their authority within the family, and already this morning, George successfully defused one of Harry's tantrums. Michael and Kemi Oshitola arrived desperate to get two-year-old son Jesse to sleep before midnight. Following Tanya's advice to create a routine and stick to it, Jesse's sleeping has dramatically improved. Last night, he went to bed at 7.40, waking only twice in the night. But will their success continue? Four-year-old Amelia Davis was driving Mum Natalie and Dad Matthew to despair over her extreme fussy eating. Since arriving, Tanya has told Natalie to relax at mealtimes and has introduced incentives to encourage Amelia to try new foods. Despite a successful first few days in the house, things appear to be falling apart. Still to come. <laughs> Amelia has been at the dining table for 30 minutes. Because you didn't eat all your, if you tried the chicken, She's eaten you can have another yogurt. She's eaten and one pot of yogurt. But no, darling. No, because you didn't eat all your lunch. You had some potatoes, so you can have one yogurt, but you can't have two, because you didn't eat both. No, darling, I'm sorry. What are you looking at? Because you've had all that potatoes. Ah, <coughs> <coughs> uh, excuse me. Did I say you could get down from the table? Come back, please. <coughs> Amelia, come back to the table and then ask me if you can leave the table. Fine. You go to your room and then you think about what I just said. You're kicking me, Amelia. Don't do that. Calm down. Are you good? You can stand there and look at that castle. That will be the last time you see it. Calm down. No. You can come to the toilet and then you come back to the table and you ask me nicely if you can leave it. Okay? All you have to say is, Mummy, please can I leave the table now? Okay? And what are you going to say? Sorry. Now go and sit back down at the table, please, and wait. Waiting for you. Are you dying? Thank I'm you. the strongest. You're the strongest. Come on then, strongest. Tanya sent the Oshitolas out to have a fun day as a family and to do a shop for the rest of the house. She's advised them to try and keep control and maintain a structure to their day. The technique for the day is to get Jesse not to have his way all the time, get him to settle down while we're shopping and be good. <laughs> So, we've got 45 minutes to play, then we're going to go, yeah? So enjoy yourself.
Yeah. Wow. Don't say that. <laughs> After a morning of play, it's time for lunch, but can Jesse be persuaded to eat with his parents? Jesse's going to reach his food now. I've had to turn his back to the play centre. That's a technique I use for Jesse because if I had him facing the play centre, he would be so distracted that it's just going to be total chaos. So, no problem so far. He's been absolutely wonderful. But will this last when they take a visit to the supermarket and still have to keep Jesse entertained? You're making a face anyway. What's wrong? Jess, are you going to help me get the potatoes? With Jess is going to help me get it. Will Kemi and Michael be able to stop the situation from getting tense? Help me get the potatoes out. Jesse, help him. Jess is helping. Jesse puts them in the trolley. Good boy. Hey, go put it in the put in the back. Go on, go on out, so. Thank you. Good boy. Today has proved to be not too bad. I mean, it seems to like being involved in the shopping activities. It seems quite like that, and um, it was quite good. We weren't embarrassed too much, and uh, <laughs> we got around in quite a quick time. Gonna see you now. Oh no, not too bad. Amelia Davis is playing with Harry and Joe Galton. It's 2.30 in the afternoon and the families are relaxing in the lounge. Now I can have the dinosaur. Oh, I've got it. I want to it. Amelia, you can't have everything, guy. I want that dinosaur. No, you've got the pram and you've got the other doll right now. Joe's playing with the dinosaur right now. And when, you, when he's not playing with it anymore, you can have a go. I want to But not right now. I just saw it over there first. No, you didn't. Joe's got it first. Joe's finished, I'm sure you can, but not right now. I just saw it first. No, you didn't. Joe's got it first. I just saw it. I just grabbed it. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm fading. I mean, I can pull you up. Oh. There we go. Thank you, Harry. That was really good. Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, okay, good. now can I have it? Where did she come from? Yeah, you can, Amelia. I don't even see her. You just come back in. Well, I like no. those biscuits for me. Do you? But why you should I give you one? Do I like biscuits? Anyone help yourself? Mm. Not you. Mm. Why should I? Why should I give you a biscuit? You can have one, Harry. I like those biscuits. But you didn't eat any lunch. I don't think you should have one, actually. I want two, Mummy. I like them too. Lucas likes them. Harry likes them. But we all ate our lunch. I want one. I like them. Sorry, darling, but I'm not giving you one. I don't want that dinosaur anymore. You are one strange child, I tell you. But 
she stopped. While Amelia is being looked after by the Galton family, Tony is taking Natalie for a chat. How are you feeling? Just uh, exhausted and drained. I just don't know. I just find it so... It's just, like, so unrewarding. You just think, I cannot see how it will ever change. I really can't. I just can't see her coming out of this because she's just so black and white about it. I just, I, I just feel frustrated. I mean, it just struck me that her behaviour has significantly deteriorated when she's on her own with you. Yeah, because she pushes my buttons. Yeah, big time. Mm. Bring the she pushes everything with me. When Matt's she's around, she doesn't do that. Today, she showed a different side of the problem. And to me, she appears like a child who very rarely has not got her own way. And when you say no to her, she goes... I mean, she flips out. Yeah, she, do, she does flip out. And gets furious. And, I mean, when she was in the bedroom on her own, she was looking in the mirror, ranting and ranting. Well, I heard her down the monitor. It's only when I could hear mm. her saying, I'm not about the... It was over the dinosaur mm. thing. And I know she does that at home. I mean, I do have a fundamental difficulty, which is something I had a very long discussion with my mother about before coming in here, was that I am not her sole carer. I'm the mo obviously the primary carer, but we are the primary carer, but I'm not the only person that's in looking after her all week long. And that is really hard sometimes when rules get set one place and rules get set somewhere else. You know, I can understand her being confused. Mm. I do think you raise a really important point that we've never really thought about in the house before because we've never really had a family that's brought this issue to us, which is what do you do when your child is being looked after by different people mm. as well as yourselves? Yeah. Now, if you were paying a nanny or a childminder to look after Amelia, I suspect you would be very specific about what she eats, when she eats and how she eats. Absolutely. These are my rules. I think when it's family who take on those child-minding mm. roles, it becomes more blurred. Absolutely. And it almost feels to me like you and Matt need to de define your rules around Amelia and how you're going to take things forward while you're in this house. Mm. Let Amelia really realise what they are, and I think you've started that just now. Yeah. And I think her reactions to you today at the lunch table with the not picking up the chicken, which was completely behavioural, battle of wills. Yeah. You dealt with it well. You tried hard with the pasta, she wouldn't do it. You were like, fine, OK. But then you stuck to your guns. She got down off the table and she basically completely disrespected you. Yeah. And you made her come back to the table and sit down and ask to get down. Mm. I'm not surprised then you've had a fight with her over dinosaur, over biscuit, over, because I think she's now seeing you in a slightly different way. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, she's kind of trying to get me back. Exactly. In principle, I think things about you are really shifting big okay. time. I don't know if you think that, but I think things are shifting yeah. a lot. But it's obviously going to take her time to get her head around it because she's used to being able to get a biscuit if she hasn't eaten. Yeah. Amelia is going to take a long time to develop her sort of palate and her diet. Mm -hmm. But the more chilled everyone is and the more people give her the impression they don't care, the quicker it'll happen. The quicker it'll happen, OK. And I think if we can just achieve that by Friday... I know. ..it's a huge step in the right direction. Mm. Tony's been working with Chris to improve his assertiveness with the children. She's given them a toy robot to play with. It's Chris's job to ensure they share the toy and manage any arguments that break out. All you want to do is burp. The children have been playing happily for 20 minutes. Oh, Harry, that was good. How did you get to do that? He got to do a funny move. Harry, look. Press that one. Press it first. Look. Toby. He's <laughs> burping. Dad, last time. Harry. Huh? Harry. You can let Joseph have a go now. Harry, let Joseph have a go now. Harry, can I have some? Wait a minute. Wait a no, minute. No, it's Joseph's go now, Harry. Harry, it's Joseph's go now. Harry, it is Joseph's go now. Harry, no. Stay away from Harry. Mummy, what it does then? Yeah. Right, you go over there then. I can't do it. It whistles. It whistles. Don't kick me. You will find the word whistle. If you kick me, you will go to your room. No, mum, you've got to find the word whistle. <laughs> Right, go 
That's your run. Now. Go on, Kira. Go. Now. You do not hit me. Sit on your bed. Stay there for a minute. Have I told you to come out yet? No, I haven't. What are you sorry for? Sorry, Daddy. For? Sorry. You do not hit me. Or anybody. If you want me to open your crisps, <coughs> you ask me. You don't hit me with them. If you do it again, we're straight back in your room. Do you understand? Yeah. I can. Of course I can. He's just not a problem anymore, is he? No. Tanya wants to get well, Amelia want eating in a more relaxed environment, please, so she's taking some coffee. snack food yes, into please. the house. Amelia has refused to eat raisins for several months. Are you liking your raisins? Can I, can I share some snacks, please? Can I have the blue bowl? Uh, Good girl with your raisins. I don't like raisins very much. Why? Teach me how to eat a raisin. Pretend you want me to eat a raisin and I won't eat one. See if you can get me to eat it. Can you eat a raisin? No! Yes! No! Yes! Here you go. <laughs> Here you go. No! Yes! No! Yes! Kiss it! Kiss it! If I kiss it, what do I get? A big clap? Then you get a big clap. If I be happy. Well, I'll kiss it first, see what happens. Ready? <laughs> go on! <laughs> I like raisins. OK, ready? <coughs> OK. I need a poo. No. You need to do a poo? Yeah. All right, cheers. Well, thanks for dropping by. Thanks <laughs> <In my raisins. laughs> so he was well behaved. Marcia Tolers have arrived back from their day out. Tony catches up with them to see how it went. So you've had a good day? Yeah, yeah no, it's been very enjoyable. It was really <laughs> nice. He's really getting into the routine now of yeah. eating at certain times, sleeping at certain. Do you think that is what is making a difference that he can sit and eat his lunch at lunchtime? Because he's got such set a routine now that he's hungry and he's ready and he knows that's what he's supposed to do. And he can do. see it. He can see it in us as well. Like Jesse, this, this is what we're going to do now. And the way we talk to him, because nobody's yeah. like Jesse, no. When, when I Jesse, yes. it, we're, I, we're not Jesse, stop. Yeah. <laughs> no. But now I just speak to him and just say, no, we're going to do this, when we do this, we do that. So you don't have to scream anymore? Yeah. So yeah. we listen? I think maybe a lot of that's to do with the fact he's got both of us with him today. We were mm. telling him, look, you know, as like you were saying the other day, try and be firm with him and make sure he understands that we're both saying the same thing. I think because he's getting that message now. Together? Yeah, together mm. from yeah. us. So he's like, OK. And calmer. Yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely. He's, uh, yeah. definitely responding to it, you know, and it's... Um, he's listening and he's calm. Mm. It's yeah. different. Yeah, it, it is. I think uh, a lot of this is to do with his sleep pattern, though, because you showed us the man his men are get, we've shifted it around, and that's obviously having the desired effect mm. on his life and how he's behaving, because he does seem to be a lot better. But he did get a bit cranky from time to time, mm. and he said he may do, because he's had uh, more sleep than usual. And, he's um, two, and kids get cranky at two. Yeah. But that's because it's normal, and so you, you're firm and you're together and mm. you manage him. Yeah. The thing is, he is now, you are now treating him like a two-year-old. He has mm. a two-year-old routine. Yeah. Yeah. And he's sleeping in a bed. I mean, you have, you have given him permission to be a little boy, and he's a happier little boy as a result mm. of it. Yeah. And mm. happier parents. Oh, yeah. no shadow doubt. While Michael and Kemi prepare dinner, the other families are in the lounge. Uh -oh. No! That's not okay! We don't play with the cupboard! 
Tanya told you earlier, we do not play in the cupboard. Oh, go. Harry, go to your room now. <laughs> Toby, do you want to take Toby? Get on your bed now. <laughs> you do not smack anyone in the face. <laughs> Sorry. It's not me you've got to say sorry to, is it? Who have you got to say sorry to? Who did you hit? Okay. Who did you hit? Do you remember? Hit people. You hit Jessie. Yeah. Hit so you need Jessie. to go and say sorry to Jessie now. Come on. Sorry to Jessie. Right. Quick! <laughs> No, Harry's got to do something before he does any playing. Let go. What have you got to do first? Hi, what have you got to do? Sorry. Jesse? Sorry, Jesse. Okay. Right, now, do you it's let Jesse play, Harry? Play. Oh, right. You can both play. You can both play. Right, you let Jesse play, Harry. Right, hold on. Calm down. Calm down. I had it first. Well, you didn't have it first. You have to share, don't you? Dutch! It's 20 past eight in the house of Tiny Tearaways, and brothers Hi. Harry and Joe are in bed. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 They're not there. It's been an exhausting day for I Natalie Davis, the yet four-year-old Amelia make? seems determined to push it up to the wire. I'll tell you what, I'm going to count to three, then I'm going to lift you and put you in that bedroom. And if I put you in that bedroom, Amelia, if I put you in that bedroom and you wake Lucas up, then I'm going to be extra angry. And if you're not careful, I'll end up taking the princess out of your castle and putting it back up there. Do you want a wee? Do you want a wee? No. In the purple suite, Kemi has bathed Jesse and is putting him to bed. What you want to do? Butterflies fluttered about Jesse. Cleopatra. Look, there's no bottle for you if you misbehave, okay? You listen quietly or no story for you. No bottle, no story if you don't listen. No. Go on then. Taking Tony's advice on gradual withdrawal, Kemi is trying to sit next to the bed while Jesse goes to sleep, rather than lying on it with him. And all is funny, had a dog. And now, what are Ken's getting on? Yeah, then I look as if I can't even put him to sleep. Of course you can. Yeah, so why why did you come? You were the one who book him in the first place. He will sleep off now, you've come in now. So if you're not there, I'm not supposed to put him to sleep. He down. fell asleep and his dad just came in and ruined everything, didn't he? Oh. And I was still trying to keep him, put him to sleep and he now just came inside where we were. And now he's completely awake. 
I would say. Ow! Ow, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, lie down, sorry, lie down. Lie down. Lie down here. Mm. Mm. Yeah, your head, sorry. Ow. Daddy, kiss your head. Daddy, kiss your head. Mm. Yeah. Strong boy, lie down. After 45 minutes, Jesse has finally settled. You know, make me look as if I can't even put him to sleep, you. Mm -hmm. What do you say? You make me look as if I can't even put him to sleep. You're the one doing all the hard work. What hard work? Came in. <laughs> <laughs> Should have just left me to it. Coming up tomorrow. I now feel I understand what her problem is. And it's you. Hurry. Shut up.